In the previous video, we inserted new note documents into Firestore. In this video, we're going to query those documents and display them in a recycler view. If this is the first video you're watching from my Firestore playlist, there's a link in the description to the videos preceding this one. You'll also find a link to the source code files. I've already added the code required for setting up the recycler view, so all we need to do is get the list of documents. Open main activity. Compared to the last video, there's a bunch of new widgets and variables I've added to the top of the file. We have the recycler view, a swipe refresh layout, an array list of note objects, that's what we're going to be displaying in the recycler view, a note recycler view adapter, and a document snapshot object. Scroll down to the init recycler view method. Here's where the recycler view is set up. There's nothing special here. I'm instantiating the recycler view adapter and passing the array list of note objects. Then I'm setting the layout manager to the recycler view and setting the adapter to the recycler view. The get notes method is where we're going to be building the query. Let's build it. Just like when we inserted new data, we need to start by instantiating a Firebase Firestore instance object. Here's where it gets a little different from inserting data. When we inserted a new note into Firestore, we used something called a document reference, which makes sense because we wanted to insert a new document. But in this case, we want to query all the documents in the notes collection for the currently authenticated user. Let's take a look at the data so you can get some visuals. Here I am with the notes collection selected in the Firebase console. I have notes from two different users here, but theoretically I could have notes from thousands or even hundreds of thousands of users. The only way I can tell one user's notes from another user's notes is by the user ID field. So it's going to be very important when we make the query to specify the user ID. I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're thinking, but Mitch, what if there's hundreds of thousands of notes? The query is likely going to be very slow if we need to check each document for the correct user ID. But fortunately for us, Firestore's search functionality is much better than the Firebase database. Firestore will actually automatically create indexes of each individual document field. So making queries like that are no problem. Let's get back to the query. Open main activity. As I was saying, here's where it gets a little different compared to setting data. Here we're going to use a collection reference object. We're using a collection reference and not a document reference because we want to retrieve all the documents within the notes collection. I'm specifying the notes collection. We're going to start with a very basic query. Then I'm going to point out some potential issues and we're going to build upon it. Here's the query. I'll call it notes query. Then I'll use the collection reference and use the where equal to method, specify the user ID and get the authenticated users user ID. That's going to be the only condition for now. Now we can make the query. To make the query, we just need to call the get method on the query object. Add an oncomplete listener just like we did before and check for task success using an if else block. If the task fails, I'm going to build a snack bar message that says query failed, check logs. If the task was successful, we'll have access to a list of query snapshot objects. That's this variable named task. The task object will contain a list of our documents. We just need to loop through the list and add the note documents to our array list. So let's write the loop. It's going to be query document snapshot objects. And to get the list, we write task.getResult. In general, this is how you retrieve a list of documents. You'll always have to loop through the list by calling getResult on the task object. Now inside the loop, we can get our note objects. The Firestore API has a method named toObject. We can use it on the query document snapshot objects. Then you just reference the class that you're casting the object to. In our case, that's the note class. The notes get added to the notes array list. And finally, we just need to tell the adapter that the data set has changed. This is how you make a query in its simplest form. There's room for improvement, but let's run it and take a look. As you can see, right when the app starts, we can see the notes. But there's a few issues. For starters, watch what happens when I drag downwards and trigger the swipe refresh. The query is doubled. That's no good. It's also not ordered. If you take a look at the dates, there's no order. The query is retrieving the documents in alphabetical order, based on their IDs. Since the IDs are random, that doesn't make much sense. So let's fix those issues. We'll start by ordering the query. I'm going to call the order by method on the query. I'll specify a timestamp field and tell it that I want to sort in ascending order. That way the oldest notes will appear at the top of the list. Adding the order by method is actually going to cause the query to fail. 
I'll show you why in a moment. First let's run it so you can see for yourself. As you can see, I'm getting an error now. It says the query failed. The query failed because now we're specifying more than one condition on it. By default, Firestore will only create indexes on individual fields. That means if you want to make a query that specifies more than one field, like I've done here, you need to build a custom index. Lucky for us, the Firebase team has made it really easy to create custom indexes. Go to the Firestore section of your Firebase console. Click on the Indexes tab. Click Add Index Manually. We want the index on the Notes collection. The first field is the user ID. I'll leave it in ascending order. The second field is the timestamp. We also want ascending here because the notes will be ordered from oldest to newest. Now click Create Index. Now Firestore will build an index in the notes collection on those two fields. So queries with those two fields specified will be optimized. This could take up to five minutes, so be patient. I'm gonna skip the video ahead to when it's complete. As you can see down here, the index is ready. I'm gonna press the back button on the app, and now I'm gonna open it again. And there's our data. So the query is now working. It's hitting the index. All right, that's one problem solved. Now we need to work on this duplicate data. Basically what's happening is when the swipe refresh is triggered, the get notes method is being executed all over again. Then the query is adding the same data to the list. So somehow we need to prevent the same data from being added to the list. There's a number of ways you could do this. I'm gonna save the position of the last document added to the list, then any queries afterwards must continue from where that document left off. Sound simple enough? Scroll up to the top of the file. That's what this document snapshot object is for. It's called last queried document. Scroll back down to get notes, cut the query, declare a new query object and set it to null. Now write if last queried object does not equal null, and then else. Inside the else, paste the old query. That's gonna be our initial query. That will run if it's the first one. Then the if is gonna be for any query made after the initial one. So in other words, that's gonna be the swipe refresh. Copy the same query, but call the start after method and pass the document snapshot. Now we just need to set the document snapshot when the query is complete. Inside the onComplete method, below the loop, write if task.getResult.size does not equal zero, then last query document equals task.getResult.getDocuments.get, and then task.getResult.size minus one. So that's going to reference the last queried document. That's it. Run it and let's take a look. When the app starts, you can see the query data. If I refresh, there's no duplicates. That's all the basics when it comes to querying data in Firestore. If you want more information on Firestore, indexes, and making queries, check out my Firestore course on Pluralsight. That course is much more detailed than this short YouTube course. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to check it out. And there's also a link to get your first 10 days free on Pluralsight. If you're interested in some of the other Firebase tools, I also have courses on Firebase authentication and sending verification emails, the Firebase database and cloud storage, and Firebase cloud messaging, cloud functions, and Crashlytics. Links to those courses will also be in the description of this video. In the next video, we're going to work on updating data in Firestore.